Dear Apple, just do me a favor and stop playing with leakers and make up your mind. I mean, Apple has completely leaked the new iPhone 9, but the launch date still isn't clear. The Samsung mobile division will apparently be manufacturing the foldable displays off their own. And Google Stadia is not at all a success, but Amazon wants to try out their own thing, it seems. I'm Jaime Rivera, and I wish I could celebrate that it's Friday, but I'm going to celebrate that we're all at home doing what's right. And I don't even know what day it is anymore. This is Pocket Now Daily. The official news today began with deals, and don't worry, we'll give you some Apple deals, but there are going to be a few others, and particularly these mostly come from Amazon. As of right now, we start with the Apple Watch Series 5, which is currently $50 off, which means you can get the 44mm GPS Plus Cellular Gold variant stainless steel for $750, and then you can also get the other variants for less. The Fossil Gen 5 Garrett stainless steel is also $120 off, pretty much leaving it to $175, depending on which color variant you look for. And finally, the Moto G8 Plus is $95 off, leaving the 4 gig of RAM, 64 gig of storage variant for 205 bucks. That and more deals in the description. Now, if you remember the whole thing about Samsung pushing out software updates to the Galaxy S10, Galaxy Note 10, that One UI 2.0 that brought most of the features that we got with the Galaxy S20, well, that announcement was then, and now it's official as of today. Pretty much every unlocked Galaxy S10 and Galaxy Note 10 variant should be getting One UI 2.1, which includes features like single take, hyperlapse, a pro video, and more. Now, obviously, devices that are locked to carriers is going to be a different story, but I'll tell you this right now. I'm currently using the Star Wars edition, which is technically unlocked. No dice, no software update. This is like, I still haven't even gotten the camera update for the S20 Ultra. Like, this is one of those things where I'm like, Samsung, like, really, what are you guys doing? Now, for those of you Google Fi users, let's uh, discuss one of the positive things that's coming out of this whole coronavirus situation, what companies are doing to address it. Right now, Google Fi has decided to increase their data limit cap to 30 gigabytes during the crisis. The new cap is available for both Google Fi flexible and unlimited plans and became effective as of April 1st. This means that uh, those 30 gigabytes are that you go up to six gigs, then everything goes unlimited until 30, and it's not until 30 that you get throttled and have to pay an extra $10 a gigabyte. On the negative note, sadly, Reuters claims that Amazon could delay Prime Day for at least a month this year, and it could cost the company $100 million since they would probably have to sell an extra $5 million devices at discounted prices. Thing about it is, Amazon, I get all that, but you know the way the economy is right now. What matters if you do a Prime Day if people right now are more interested in other more important things? Now raise your hand how many of you are actually fans of Google Stadia. I, don't fight. I know that there's at least one of you out there. Nobody? Because that's not even me. The thing about it is, you know, Google Stadia, there's a lot of promise. It's a good concept. But a lot of things about it don't make sense, and the deployment just wasn't great. But the thing about it is, it seems that companies want to either tell Google how it's done or compete in a terrible market. Amazon apparently wants to try their own cloud gaming system. And, uh, well, the company launched a teaser for a new game called Crucible, which would work on a new Project Tempo platform. It would work pretty much like Stadia with a cloud-based system that doesn't require downloads and works with low-end hardware. We're expecting for it to launch later this year after the pandemic, though, you know what, Amazon, this is probably the best time to launch it when people actually have to spend a lot of time at home. Now, how about if we move the spotlight to Samsung? I mean, the company is uh, legendary for their displays. They've pretty much manufactured the best displays in the market for years now. But the thing about it is it wasn't really Samsung's mobile division. It was Samsung's display division, and apparently that's going to change partially. It seems that the company wants to move its folding displays manufacturing to their mobile division to manufacture their own folding glass. This apparently is to reduce cost and create a more competitive nature in the industry. The mobile division has already started development of folding glass technology technology and has spoken to other companies about it. Their current goal is to improve the quality of folding glass by making it thicker without any complications. The thing about it is I wonder how many competitors are going to want to buy glass from Samsung Mobile instead of Samsung Displays and, you know, have a competitor like, yeah, that's that, that, that looks weird. And finally, the most interesting news today have to do with the least interesting product that most people want to buy. And it's a less expensive iPhone because we got to hand it to the company. I wasn't really a fan of iPhones before. 
2019, but they kind of did a really amazing job with their iPhone 11 lineup. Think about it as a report from 9to5Mac claimed that we could be getting the iPhone 9 through a silent launch as of today. The new budget iPhone would bring a $399 price tag, come with three color options, silver, gray, and product red, and comes with 64 and up to 256 gigs of storage. That obviously didn't happen, but then we had Canada's Virgin Mobile that had the device live on their website listing for a while until they confirmed and they actually wrote to us telling us that it was a glitch in their system. The phone was then also completely leaked by Apple as it was listed in accessories like this Belkin screen protector listed with the iPhone SE 8 and 7, and it clearly doesn't have the original design of the iPhone SE. Obviously, all these listings got, you know, leaked and then removed and whatever, but let us know in the comments down below are you interested in the iphone 9 because in my case i think that that's like the perfect iphone to give to somebody that's like the perfect gift for a kid or anything and i think that it's going to be popular because if it brings all the hardware of the current iphones uh you know with the old design then people also have a chance to get that home button love that some people are still looking for but at the same time i just find it so funny like the company just totally grabs everybody you know unprepared for that ipad pro launch and now I mean, what's the difference if you launch that iPhone? Now, the rumors are that it might land during the weekend, but Apple has never done that, so that doesn't make sense. We'll see. Leave us a comment down below. Let us know if you're excited. Friends, again, if you want to get the news earlier, follow us on pocketnow.com and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this one. Also, follow us on social media. Our extended coverage happens on Instagram and follow me on my personal handles, uh, well, to see me staying at home. Please give this video a thumbs up if you like what you saw. I'm Jaime Rivera. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you next week.